This film shows the function and the use of the stereotoner, an electronic reading aid for the blind developed by Malk Laboratories in Dayton, Ohio, as part of a program sponsored by the Veterans Administration. Here is Dr. Eugene Murphy, the Chief of the Research and Development Branch of the Veterans Administration Prosthetic and Sensory Aid Service. The stereotoner presents slightly different sound patterns to each ear of the blind user. With practice, he learns to identify these as letters. This skill provides immediate access to books, periodicals, and personal correspondence. The stereotoner not only is the smallest and lightest, but the least expensive and most versatile reading aid available today. It promises to be useful for many applications, both at home and at work. We are confident that provision of this device, plus training in its use, will contribute materially to the rehabilitation of blind people, veteran and non-veteran alike. Letters scanned by the stereotoner probe are projected onto a column of 10 photocells about one quarter inch high. Each photocell triggers a different tone. The higher tones correspond to the upper parts of letters. If a large letter V covering all 10 photocells were scanned with a stereotoner, this would be the sound. Actually, the magnification is adjusted so that a small letter V covers five cells and sounds like this. A small letter W sounds like two Vs in rapid succession. A small letter H darkens seven photocells with its first vertical bar producing a chord. The horizontal bar sounds a single sustained tone and the short vertical column at the end makes a chord which lacks the two highest notes of the first chord. Altogether, the H sounds like this. The two lowest photocells are covered by descender portions of letters. For example, the letter Y sounds like the V, except for these two tones. These three letters, W, H, Y, can be combined to make the word why. The tone patterns are similar at faster speeds. Slight mistracking above the line of print or below the line of print changes the individual pitches produced, but the patterns can still be recognized. Adding cirrus to the letters produces fewer changes than one might expect. By using the built-in capability to align the stereotoner probe with slanted letters, the experienced user can even read italics. As Dr. Murphy mentioned, the tone patterns are different for each year to produce a stereophonic effect. The tones corresponding to the upper parts of letters are louder in the right ear and less loud in the left ear. Conversely, the tones for the lower parts of letters sound louder in the left ear and less loud in the right ear, which makes the letters appear spread from one side to the other. Thus, parts of letters are not only separated by pitch differences, but also by appearing to come from different directions. Here's what the right ear alone would hear when reading the word why. This is the tone loudness pattern for the left ear. The optical probe of the stereotoner is small, only 7 eighths of an inch in diameter and 3 and 1 half inches high. It weighs just 1 and 1 half ounces. A coated roller and its mounting bracket are attached to the probe base. They can be rotated to align the photocells with italic letters. Light produced by a miniature lamp inside a novel clamshell reflector is directed through a slit in the base onto the reading matter. The lamp uses a maximum power of three-tenths of a watt and is rated to operate for thousands of hours before a replacement is needed. 
Magnification control is a small knob on the side of the stereotoner probe. When this knob is moved up and around the outside of the probe, the lens and photocell array are moved smoothly from positions which produce a magnification of 3.16 times to positions which produce a reduction of 3.16 times. This 10 to 1 range covers letter sizes from the classified ads to headline sizes, three quarters of an inch high, and all sizes in between. The top part of the probe is an assembly which contains the photocell array sealed under glass and the lamp brightness control. The cable from the probe leads to the stereo toner control box. The controls on the box are three slide switches, one for power on off, one for monorial or stereophonic output, and one for normal or reverse print, that is light letters on a dark background, and two volume controls, one for each of the two earphones. The control box contains the electronic circuitry, a rechargeable battery which can operate the stereo toner for up to eight or nine hours between charges, and storage spaces for the two earphones and the probe. The box is about five and one half inches wide, four and one half inches high, and weighs 17 ounces. Here is Mr. Harvey Lauer, a reading machine specialist from the Veterans Administration Hospital in Hines, Illinois. Mr. Lauer is demonstrating the process of preparing this stereo toner for reading. Mr. Lauer is reading for the first time a letter requesting more information on the stereo toner. We can hear what he hears except for the stereophonic effects. Device developed by your laboratories for assisting blind persons to translate letter shapes into and that's the sound of going to a new line. Stereophonic sound patterns. Well, it's very exciting for looking at print in the typewriter, for reading one's own typing as it's in the process of being typed, and for reading the little things, because it's so easy to set up and uh, get ready to use. I'm really looking forward to it for myself and for my students.